the biggest strength of the program is located in its various partnerships, civic organizations, uh, work with parliamentarians, work with uh, uh, universities, work with the human, uh, women's movement, work with uh, the traditional leadership, work with um, um, war veterans, work with every other organized entity that has a stake in ensuring that the sector is at the service of the generality of the people of Zimbabwe. You cannot ignore the organized and mobilized uh, uniformed forces across the board. Uh, you have to have their buy-in. It's important to have their support. So between those and civil society, I would say you need to pay equal attention. If you are able to make all your partners adopt the security sector into their own programs, it means their programs are not even aligned to your own time frame. It becomes a living organism, a living entity in their various programs. So we depend in a big way on our partners. We call, we call them boundary partners. And that, that is a, a huge, um, I must say, advantage for the program because then, you know, it expands our reach by engaging partners with their own constituencies. So engaging other stakeholders also brings risks because some people may not be uh, knowledgeable enough to know how to handle these issues. And, and, and problems may arise from them trying to do part of what we want to do with them. What is necessary and important, and I think ideal, is what they have done to try and penetrate uh, slowly and cautiously. Uh, but eventually we'll get there because if you uh, realize from the start, it was not easy to talk about security sector reform. It was a taboo. But through their connections, and uh, the way they have managed to uh, to gain acceptance, mm -hmm. we now even have this memorandum, for instance, with Parliament. This was an head of, but it's out of the slow process that they have tried to to implement, um, so that they eventually get accepted. So yes, we would want a situation where at some point <laughs> they are able to engage the top hierarchy. Mm -hmm. But I am saying, through the research that we do, the top hierarchy will be able to, to, read, to, 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 to read and get to know about mm. these issues, mm. even without necessarily directly talking to them. You will notice that sometimes they are said, okay, go, they are told, go and work with, uh, go with, and work with those juniors. But the seniors already know that these people are uh, engaged in such kind of work on security sector transformation. To sit on the same table with uh, the, the commander of the defense forces is not necessarily the way to go. Mm -hmm. But to ensure that what you produce, what you do, is perceived as being in the national interest. To bring them closer to the public would be through the public uh, hearing systems where parliament is, is there. I have seen them... Um, softening up to parliament uh, the security sector i'm sure that is another step which can be taken because they seem now to be warming up to parliament and as we continue especially with the harmonization of the of the um, laws to the constitution mm -hmm. which is currently going on there is more public hearings that will be taking place their involvement in that will bring closer the the ZPSP parliament and the and the masses and the security sector. I think we've he made headways because now we actually get the police saying, "Look, we need to to go to a certain area. Um, are you able to to introduce the subject on our behalf?" Um, we've uh, had um, times when we've worked with them to introduce the community-based um, policing system 
we organized even soccer matches, the police against the, the, the community and introduced some other soccer games. And in those areas, we found that the relationship has become much better. They've managed to deal with the, you know, small petty crimes that were happening within those communities. So basically, this is the work that we, we have done that is inputted into ZPSP. But we've not been able to to say here we are within the community and we are doing security sector transformation. It has just come gradually within our programming as we work here. They have this strong link with government, which is the policy making organ of the country. And uh, their influence on government to, 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 to implement the policies that are actually pro the, the, the grassroots is their biggest link with all other communities. I think as organization, we've always wanted that direct link with government that is not confrontational. And ZPSP actually provides that link that does not bring confrontation. We know that most of us NGOs, CSOs, have been viewed as, as regime change organs. However, ZPSP has always managed to remain outside the circle of regime change um, people. And that link has also helped to, 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 to authenticize the, the other um, NGOs or civil society organizations that are working on the ground. As we work, I found that the, the interaction is at a very high level. Uh, it has not been easy in Zimbabwe to get the chiefs to work with any organization. Later on, one that talks about uh, uh, transforming a whole armed force because the chiefs have been very closely aligned with them, um, with government and with ZANU PF in particular, and they've got their own stake to provide to to protect. And that close link and working with them has been a very very big step forward. The ZPS at the moment is very small. They need to go into the key institutions in a bigger way than they are doing now. 75% of the population of this country is directly under the, the traditional leadership. That's very important. But like I've just said, they have not even covered of the, the top level of the leaders. They have not covered even, uh, if I say chiefs, they have not done even half of that.